good news is, is we have a lovely guest here, Dr. Candace Feinberg. She's the CEO and founder of Rawi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and you'll correct us in a minute. Um, she's a leader in developing innovative, evidence-based therapeutic programs for clients suffering from mental health issues. Their program really produces real results. First of all, am I pronouncing it correctly? Rowey, or it's, is that an acronym? It's Rowey. Rowey, yeah. okay. Like Rowey, right? It Rowie. stands for Roots and Wings. Oh, okay. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. What inspired you to, to uh, create this? Yeah, I've been working in adolescent treatment for the past 20 years um, for other companies, and I really just wanted to do quality work. And I never worked for a clinician owner. And so I wanted to start Rowie to put the money into the programming, into the clinical, and really just do quality work. That's great. Um, so what do you what what is your role there? You're overseeing everything as CEO. You've got a staff of people who do what exactly? Yeah. So I'm now. I am. I've always been the CEO, but I started out in the first program as the program director, the family therapist, the mm. in, like doing all of the work in the program. Um, and as we've grown, my role has been more in oversight. I also do clinical supervision and training for the team. Oh wow! Uh, so many years you've been at this. I've been doing this for 20 years. Wow. wow. Yeah. I okay. think you got it right now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it down by road. What are some of the, some of the com, uh, common challenges that uh, adolescents are facing today? You know, it's interesting because they change over time, mm -hmm. right? The same, it's the same sort of, they have a negative coping skill, right? What that is, is what changes over time. But, but adolescents haven't changed. They've been, they've been performing for us, right? And since as long as I've been doing this and probably you, when you were a teenager, mm -hmm. oh, you have your own story, saying, right? right? <laughs> so uh, today I think that a lot of it has to do with social skills. It has, I mean, the, the, obviously the pandemic was a big setback for adolescent mental health, as is technology um, and social media. How did you see that the pandemic affected them? In what ways? So... And like it's the same way, and maybe you continued to go to the office, right? But uh -huh. we we thrive on connection as humans. We need connection, and to be home alone and isolated for that extended period of time during a really formative period that's that's detrimental. Right, right. You know, we we have uh, over at the Heart District, and I I I think the smartphones have done a real disservice to our kids. I don't think it's very been very smart for our kids, but um, we took the cell phones away from them in junior high school. They no longer could use them. That's fantastic. Right. Oh, I'm going to tell you what, the teachers, everybody was kind of like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, we had very few complaints from the parents. And now you're watching these kids actually interact with each other. They're actually talking with each other. They're touching, you know what I'm saying? They're they're yeah. getting involved. You take and go over to the high school where they were still allowed. And my joke is, you know, when I went to school 100 years ago, we had cliques, right? People hung out with the people they want to hang out with. Mm -hmm. You see the same thing there, but they're not talking to each other. They're text. I mean, they're three feet away from each other. I think they're texting each other and five other people. <laughs> There's no interaction. It's a whole different feel and look, and and that's got to be um, a real problem in in development, isn't it? Yeah. Well, think about if you had the option of texting somebody and not getting that in person rejection. That's a lot easier, right? So you never develop that mm. skill or get pushed out of your comfort zone and forced into into that that interaction and learning that life experience yeah it's, well it's we, huge. we just did that story breaking. about breaking up texting the yeah thing, you know, <laughs> breaking up you texting, know, break up jobs. face to face yep i i will tell a story um i did my dissertation on wired teens because when i it, we were wired then yeah uh now it's wireless and this was pre-smartphones but i had asked my son you know his girlfriend was at the baseball park and i go why don't you go say hi and he goes i don't have my phone and I was oh, like, that's oh, no, no. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great. No, it is. It, it's interesting because everything now is done by phone. And to your point, you don't get to see body language. You don't get to see the pain or the joy in somebody else's face and some of the comments you're making. It's just, it's way too easy. Right. Uh, you know, or what have you. So I know that uh, at the Heart District uh, recently announced cuts to mental health care and Funding and all that, and I know that um, uh, again, you're you're concerned about that, and yeah, I mean, I think 
I think that we've done a disservice in the structure of what we're providing as a as a state. Uh, and when I read the the bill, there's you know six million dollars put into mental health for adolescents because this is a crisis, and it's all in it's all reactive. And what we need to be is preventative. Mm-hmm. We need to teach preventative skills. We need to teach coping skills, distress tolerance, the things that the kids need that they're not getting. And so I think that by not having it in the schools, I think that the way we do the the presidential fitness awards and you mm. have to do PE and some sort of, we need to have that. There needs to be a so. mental health curriculum in the school. And I think that that is a disservice, but we can fill in that gap at Rowey. That's smart. What do the parents look for in order to determine that they should bring their kids into to Rowey? What are, what kind of, what's the range of? Yeah. So you your kids function at what we call baseline, right? So they're normal. And that's different for every kid. You know, some just, they're not social and that's just, they're normal mm-hmm. and that's okay. Um, what you're looking for is some type of change. And what I've seen over the years is that it's about two years too long before they wow. bring their kid in. So you see a change, bring them in for an assessment. Mm-hmm. We do free assessments. Okay. You know, you talked about coping skills and it's been one of the things that I've talked about for years and I'm no expert but I'm just you know I'm one of those guys that looks and says what's the difference between the 70s when I grew up and today and I think kids I call them the speed bump generation when we were growing up we came up on a wall and dad said you go through it you go over it you go around it it's not an obstacle today they something happens anything happens and they're looking back for help I I mean, this is maybe not going to be taken well, but it's really the parents. Um, I believe, I'm 100% on your page. You know, I say it all the time. When, when we were kids, think about it. We would, you know, take off on our bikes and come home when the streetlights came <laughs> on. And if yeah. something happened, we had to find a payphone. And now if we text our, our kids and they don't respond... Oh. We're in a panic, right? Panic. We're so anxious and so nervous, and we think that society is so much worse, and it's not. Crime has actually gone down since the 70s. But Wow, that's so good you said that. But we're more anxious as parents, and so I think that that has created an anxious generation. But do you think it's because, you know, your point, you're right. My mom didn't know where I was all day long. You look for the pack of bikes somewhere or check one of the local parks. We were all playing there, but... Uh, do you think that the the internet or the the instantaneous news of some kid getting snatched in, you know, backwards Wyoming or something, all of a sudden, my God, it's going to happen here? Hundred percent. And, and 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 parents have just, you know what I'm saying? Yep, hundred like, percent. We have so much information in the in our pocket, and we you know we hear the bad stuff all the time. We don't hear the good stuff. And I was going to my car yesterday, and a woman comes to me, and she goes, she'd been on Megan's Law, and she informed me of who in the apartment building was on that list, and I freaked. I'm a helicopter grandma, so <laughs> so I'm not, I'm the worst of this. Oh. I didn't. You look at I I. Do you remember what he was calling it a while back? Free range parenting. Yes, right. I was like guilty. Okay, uh, I was one of those parents that locked it. Said, get get out, get your room cleaned, and get outside. You know, yeah. grow if towards you the sun. Don't come home dirty or yeah. jeans come home at lunch. Up, you didn't have a good that's time. right. You didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't have a good time if you didn't have a little blood on the palm of your hands. Unstructured or play is is uh, underrated. <laughs> yeah, so. it's necessary. Do we have a moment to ask her about the future uh, innovations? Go ahead. He's All gonna, right. He's gonna future push it innovations for us. in adolescent mental health care. There's a lot of interesting uh, research coming out now about uh, metabolic disorders and, uh, um, you know, different ways that our mind body are connected uh-huh. where we're able to see there's a, there's a prevalence rates of, of mental health disorders over time haven't changed, but they are now they're changing. And so that's, that's interesting. But if you look at the physical piece as well those are also changing so i think there's a lot of a lot of areas that we're going to learn about how we can improve mental health through our diet through exercise through mindfulness through things that are more body related um going forward that's going to be a big part of it i I think because of the first two items i'll probably have major mental health problems so exercise and diet to him about diet we've only (laughs) we've only got about 30 seconds left how do people get in touch with you if they Want to get some more information or make an appointment? Yeah, you can go on our website. It's uh, roweteen.com, and uh, there's a free assessment link. There's an application link, and you can learn all about the, the team. 
Great. Oh, very good. Mm, really appreciate your time with us today. Yeah, really, really. Thanks My a lot. My pleasure. You're listening to Trending SUV here on KHTS AM 1220 FM 98.1 with Sonia Schmidt. And Joe Messina will be back in just a couple minutes.